So after you've decided which unit's going to be your controller and set it up as we did in the uh, previous example, we're actually going to log into that controller and get, get started. So once again, now we're going to put in that same address, 192.168.1.254. username admin admin now you see over here it's telling us we're logging into a controller so this unit was now made into a controller and now the GUI is loading this may take a few seconds just gathering the information from the uh, from the controller and as we can see over here the controller is starting to show up and there we go so we have our first network element showing up I'm just going to click on this network element and actually give it a name let's call it the uh, central office save that and there we go so now what I'll do is I'll actually uh, connect the remote units so basically uh, on the unit it's a, it's a four port unit you have two ports for the client traffic and two ports for the ring traffic so kind of like the east and the west or the e in and the out and they're identified with the left arrows right arrows and ports three and four so what I'm going to do now is uh, just plug them in and what's important to remember you always go from port 3 to port 4 port 3 to port 4 or a left arrow to a right arrow right so you go in and out so I'm just gonna hook those up and we'll actually see the network uh, show up on the screen with the actual topology and then we'll be ready to actually put some uh, names on there name the network elements we'll name the links and uh, create a, a service and start running some traffic through here So here we have three network elements, and as you can see, the, the lines are starting to fill in. So the auto discovery basically is using information from the Y1731 uh, map index with the uh, MAC address of the uh, units uh, facing on either sides and building a topology table. So we'll have a, a visual uh, representation of the link. So we have our first link that show up and the link for these other units will show up as well. While it's doing that, I'll just give this unit a, a name. There's one over here, edit. I'll just call it, let's say, remote one. Save that. There we go, what location? No name, so let's just call it link one. Enter on that. So now we have name on the link here, uh, names on the unit. So here we're seeing all green links. 0% utilization on all the links. I have no traffic going through there right now. So what we can do is we'll actually um, maybe set up a bit of traffic over here. So if I take a look, I have my remote one and remote two. So central office and remote one, I see my client ports are up. So I'm just going to um, create a, uh, a service on that one because I know that's where my traffic gen is. So I'll go here, create a service. So basically this is how we create a service. Central office to remote one, drag and drop. I can call it service one, I can call it voice, I can call it data, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it here. What VLAN am I using? So we can put a range or an actual uh, VLAN. So I could be using, you know, 100 to 200, or it could just be, uh, you know, I'm using VLAN 101 for this service. The bandwidth for the service, I don't know, I'll put, uh, 80 megs. It's a medium priority. I can uh, preserve and pop the VLAN. So basically, if I had, you know, a VLAN based service at one side and I wanted to be basically a port based at the other end, I could just pop the VLAN at the remote side. So I'd be using VLAN 101 at the central location and it would be untagged traffic at the remote side coming out on port one. Anything coming in on port one at the remote would be coming out on VLAN 101 at the central side. I can select which port I'm going to use, port 1 or port 2. And here we have some other uh, services. A tunnel service is create, to create a, a pass-through, so a ring and ring. And we'll take a look at that when we get some, some of the other topologies. I can enable a bandwidth regulator, right? So this 80 megs is not just a wait right now. I'm actually regulating at 80 megs, so I won't let more than 80 megs of traffic pass through. And here I have a path override. So just to show you what that is, I'm going to save this service. So we've created this service. If I come over here to the service tab on voice, it shows me that the service is created and the path that it's taking is here between, uh, you know, on this line over here. And that's by this purple line that's here. 
Now, if I wanted to do some changes, let me just move this over so it's a little easier to see. And, you know, I'm the network engineer or, you know, we have reasons why we don't want to take this path. We could come over here to path override, select a different path. So now if I click west, it's showing me this is the path it would take for that scenario. And if I click here, it's showing me this is the path it'll take, which is the one it's already on. So I'll click this one here and hit save on that. So now what's going to happen, we've actually overridden what the uh, system thought was the, was the best path, and the traffic is now going to take this path over here. And now you see this uh, traffic going through over here of 4%. This is now going to start to go down, and the numbers will increment over here because the traffic is actually taking the... So in a nutshell, uh, basically, you know, this is where we can select our, our different uh, network elements to create a service and uh, once that service is created we can actually force it to a specific path if we want to. We can regulate to a uh, specific speed. We can set a priority and by setting the priority we're setting the priority bit that will be used by the uh, shapers. And as we can see over here we can also visualize the traffic going through and as we saw a bit earlier I can now even go down to my stats and take a look at my, my voice service hit that update every five seconds and we'll actually see the uh, this information over here update